Welcome to HB Tuner's Ford Mod Motor Training Part 19. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our idle control tuning and our Ford PCMs. We're going to find that the idle control is going to be a mixture of both airflow and spark timing based control. Ultimately, we're trying to achieve a certain level of torque out of the engine, so we hold at the desired idle RPM that we're programming within our PCM. We're going to look at how to go in and work with the idle control, especially the airflow based portion of the programming, so that we have everything modeled correctly within the idle control and we're going to find it functions as expected. There's going to be a lot to cover, so let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at our idle control programming in our Ford PCMs. We're going to be finding that the idle control is relatively simple to, to program and to work with, but there's a lot of things that we need to know and to make sure that we have set up properly. So let's open up a file. Let's start to take a look at some things. So we're going to go in here to file open. Now in this case, I'm going to be opening up my base file 4, and that's what I'm going to be working with in this video. This is what I've used in the mass, mass airflow calibration process in some separate videos, so we're going to be carrying forward this, this particular file in this video. Now, if you're able to follow along with any calibration file from a V6 or a V8 Mustang, doesn't really matter. The idle control is going to be functioning exactly the same between any of them. Now within our calibration file, we're going to go here under Engine, and then we're going to go here under General, and then we're going to move here into Idle. Now here we have three separate tabs under idle. We have a general, we have an RPM, we have an airflow. Now we're going to be starting off here and taking a look and talking about our RPM because this is where we specify where we want the engine to idle at. Then we're going to have an airflow base portion of our idle control and we'll find that the airflow is going to be translated into a drive-by wire throttle plate opening. We have separate tables that we specified all the details for the effective area for the throttle plate that we're working with on the drive-by wire we have fitted to the engine. So the PCM understands how to translate the amount of airflow to the amount of throttle angle that we're dealing with. We don't have an idle control motor, we just have the drive-by wire to allow more or less airflow into the engine. We also have, as another aspect to the idle control, spark timing feedback. And spark timing feedback is used to be able to hold us at our target RPM when we're within 50 RPM of the target idle speed that we're after. We're going to find that we have kind of a window or a block to work with within our idle control. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later once we take a look at general here. We can specify some certain conditions that we program. But we'll find that it's both a combination of idle or, or, or airflow based idle control and spark timing to achieve ultimately the engine torque that we're after. Engine torque is what gets us to the idle RPM that we want to be at. So we're manipulating the engine torque in two different ways, airflow based, spark timing based. Spark timing is much faster, it's dynamically adjusted, and it's going to be used for our fine adjustments. Any course adjustments are going to be airflow based as we're going to be discovering here a little bit later in the video. Let's move into our middle tab here under engine RPM and let's talk about this. We're going to be moving from the left side to the right side of the screen and just going through all the different points and then we'll move into airflow, then we'll move into general. We are going to be taking a look at our VCM scanner a little bit later in the video, learning what channels we need to data log and then going into a histogram and learning what we need to actually capture to be able to recalibrate our airflow tables for the idle control here. So starting off under engine RPM, we're going to find that we have our transmission base set point. We have a park neutral and a drive. These two RPM set points are, can essentially be thought of as a warm idle speed. Where do we want our engine to idle when it's warm? Now we have modifiers based on coolant, coolant temperature and when we're starting up the engine. Those can be added on top of this, but this is our base set point. Now if you're dealing with an engine that has aftermarket camshafts, you may want to bump this up at least 100 to 200 RPMs over the stock values so that we can have a stable idle speed. Um, we'll find even though the idle RPM, uh, the idle control could potentially allow the engine to idle at this lower speed. It may idle very rough and that's not going to be desirable. It may shake the car too much. You might have to bump this up. So keep that in mind if you have a larger camshaft. You also might want to go in and idle at a higher RPM if you have larger injectors installed. Larger injectors don't run very well at low injector pulse widths. So to be able to compensate for that, if we bump our idle speed up, it'll move our injector pulse width up just slightly and make them idle and run in a more linear fashion, which will be more predictable for the idle control and just overall operation of the engine. So that's going to be some things to factor in. So I'm going to be leaving these alone on this particular example. I have stock camshafts installed. I have relatively small injectors. This isn't going to be a concern. The engine should be able to idle completely fine at 700 RPM range. Now the next area here is our idle adders. We have a few things, a few tables to deal with. These are going to add on top of whatever our base set points at. So that's our warm idle speed. This can only go in and add on top. So the first option here, fan high idle speed idle. This is turned to enable. 
when the high idle the high fan is turned on or the cooling fan it's going to go in and it's going to add a certain amount of rpm offset to the base value so that might be 50 rpm that might be 100 rpm we can actually go in and log in our vcm scanner what our target or desired idle rpm should be at and that's going to tell us kind of what's going on with these tables here. So we're gonna leave this enable. If your calibration file has an enable, leave it enable. If it's disabled in your stock form, leave it disabled. We don't need to worry about it, but that is going to be a, a factor in the idle control. So we have ECT and IAT, let's pop in here. The ECT is gonna be engine coolant temperature, idle RPM adder. This is going to be our coolant temp on the side here with our idle RPM offsets or adders to the base amounts. So for example here, from firing the engine off at 50 degrees coolant temp, we're gonna find that it has a 400 RPM offset or adder. So if my base value is at 725 and I add 400 to that, the new target idle when we're firing off the engine. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.